Welcome to the Electronium Command Line Wallet Masterclass. In this video, we'll cover safely setting up a brand new CLI wallet, sending Electronium from the wallet, and receiving Electronium into the wallet. We'll go over all of the commonly used commands. Let's get started right now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button for me, and comment below. All right, welcome. So before we get started today, I want to go through some basic best practices, because I want to keep your wallet and your ETN as safe as possible. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so the very first thing that I want to talk about on best practices is the integrity and the safety of your wallet data. You don't want this information to fall into the hands of anyone other than you. So the very first thing that we need is a Windows installation it can be Windows 7 or Windows 10, but we need a semi-clean, clean as possible Windows installation. I understand that not everybody can overwrite their operating system and start fresh which is quite frankly the easiest and safest way to go about creating a new wallet with less possibility of someone compromising your wallet data. Let's be frank. If you know that your computer has been to places on the internet that are subject to malicious content, then you know, first of all, this is probably not the best place to create a new wallet. One thing that I strongly recommend is make sure, at a minimum, that your Windows installation is up to date. If it's not up to date, I would recommend that you go ahead and do that as a safety precaution to make sure that your Windows Defender, Virus, uh, any other program that you have uh, additionally like McAfee or any of these other programs everything's up to date that just lessens the likelihood doesn't prevent but lessens the likelihood that uh, someone has compromised your system or is actively uh, infiltrating or using your information without your knowledge one other thing that we're going to talk about is taking your computer offline while creating the wallet and I'll show you that in just a minute the last thing that I want to touch on really quickly is passwords and keeping this information off of the computer that you're creating the wallet on we need to what's called air gap this information from an internet uh, connection so what I mean by that is one, we need to have really good passwords. And two, we need to keep this information out of the hands of anybody that would want to steal your wallet data. The easiest way to do that and the safest manner, safest way to do it, is to keep your information on a external hard drive or a encrypted thumb drive. Even if you don't have an encrypted thumb drive, you can get a thumb drive uh, fairly cheaply uh, just about anywhere on the internet I would recommend a minimum of 16 or 32 gigs alright guys so what I mean by encrypted thumb drive you see here I have an Aegeus secure key now this particular key this particular USB stick has a thumb pad on it it's 256 bit uh, encryption so unless you have the code to get in after you plug it in you type in the code that only you know or a person that you trust knows honestly the only person I trust are family members once you stick this in you have access to the wallet data you're gonna keep all of your information on a device like this on the other side you can actually use a encrypted uh, hard drive like an external hard drive that I would recommend alternatively to this 
stick your information on. Now, you don't want to leave that connected to the computer. Same thing here. Once you take this out of the computer, that information is safe and secure. You can put this in a wall locker, a safe, somewhere where it's, where it's very secure, add a second layer of security to it. At a very minimum, you should have that device, whether it be a regular USB stick, as you see here, the SanDisk, you should have that locked up or somewhere safe that you know no one can get to it. That way, that even if you don't, if you have a cheaper model like this that you can get for $10 in uh, an electronic store or online anywhere, at least you know that no one can grab that key if it's locked up somewhere and stick it in your USB stick key and stick it in and get to your wallet information. Step one, new wallet creation. All right, guys, so the very first thing that we want to do here is go to either downloads.electronium.com or go to electronium.com and scroll down to the very bottom of the page. Now, don't worry, I'm going to put all of these links in the description below so there's uh, no worry, you can sit there and watch the video and click on the link directly in the description below and get to exactly where I'm looking at. So no confusion. I can click downloads on electronium.com or again, downloads.electronium.com will take you directly to this page. Now, what we want to do, the safest and most secure way to do this is one we need to be on Google Chrome browser okay there's a download link here this works best with Google Chrome I have tested it on the brave browser and it seems to work correctly at least for me but to make sure that you don't have any issues use the Chrome uh, download if you do not have Chrome or use just the Chrome browser that you already have loaded on your machine. Now, what we want to do is click download zip file. Alternatively, you can use the browser version. The exact same thing, but when I download the zip, I've got a copy of it uh, that I'm going to use and keep with the rest of my wallet data. And I'll show you that here in a few moments. So what I want to do after I've downloaded it, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this so we have more screen real estate and less confusing. Put this right in the middle of the page. And we're going to have to extract these files. What I want to do is create a folder. You can name this whatever you want, but on the desktop because I'm going to take this after I sync the data and put it directly onto my external hard drive or my thumb drive. Okay, we're not going to keep it here, but this just makes it easy for this example. You can put it somewhere else on the computer, but I would recommend putting it in an easy to find location. I'm going to name this ETN. Okay, now when I click on this, all right, in Windows 10, Windows 7 will be a little different, but in Windows 10, it's going to ask you whether you want to open it up in Microsoft Edge, which will work as well, but per Electronium's instructions, we're going to stick with Google Chrome. I'm going to tell it Google Chrome, and it's going to open up a page that looks like this. Now, just so you understand, this is a file local on the computer or on your hard drive or your thumb drive this is actually not on the internet okay for now let's go ahead and minimize that and this is for Mac users obviously and this is for Windows we're obviously on Windows installation here so I'm gonna get this I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna open up my ETN file and I'm going to paste that into the ETN folder that I just created. I can go ahead and minimize this. 
I can go ahead and close that out if I'd like. Go back to my web browser. Now here is the important part. I really want to stress this. I want you to disconnect from the internet one of two ways. If you're on wireless, I want you to turn your wireless adapter off. If you're on a actual wired connection, you can unplug from the back of the computer or you can go to your internet connections here. Change connection properties. Click the back button. Go to change adapter options. And you can right click and disable the internet connection. After we get done uh, creating the wallet, you can reconnect to the internet. Again, this is going to be the safest option. What this does is air gap the computer from the internet temporarily while you are creating the wallet. That way, if there is a keylogger or something that has infected your computer, your host, uh, it stops the communication process. Now, this is not foolproof, but this is best practices. Again, I'm trying to help you guys create your wallet in the safest uh, format or safe it, safest way possible. So I am unable to do that due to the fact that I am remoted into this computer. Uh, I'm using a program called ScreenShare and that allows me to remote in but it uses an internet connection so I'm unable to do it. But if you are following this video I want you to disconnect from the internet now. Hopefully you're watching the video on another device All right, so let's get started. All right, we've disconnected from the internet. Again, this is a local file. It just uses a web browser to uh, show you the information, okay? So as you can see here, for maximum security, you should download a version to run from a USB stick on a PC or Mac that is not connected to the internet, okay? Here's the download again. It's telling you right here, disconnect from the internet when you do this. So let's get started. Click let's get started. Now you're going to move your mouse in all these different directions. Don't do back and forth. Don't do up and down. You're basically creating random generated wallet. Now save wallet as PDF. It's generating just should have shown up in my downloads folder as well if we click on it it's going to open up in the browser but I can go to downloads and you see here electronium offline wallet PDF I'm going to copy very important step here guys do this step by step with me I'm gonna open up my ETN wallet and I'm going to paste that offline wallet PDF in here. So now what I want to do is completely close my browser sessions down. And it's also helpful if you go in and delete the history. Again, you don't have to do all of these steps to create a wallet. I'm just trying to give you best practices. Okay. So if I wanted to, I could go to history and tell it clear browsing cache and advanced. I'll just do all time and then close the browser out. So now that is completely closed out. We see here in downloads folder, what I want to do is delete this out of my downloads folder. Make sure that you don't delete from the wrong location. Okay. We know that the ETN folder that we just 
created has this information in it. The offline wallet generator and the Electronium offline wallet, the file that you just created. Okay? So I'm going to close that out so I don't delete the wrong thing. And I want to delete this from my downloads folder. Now, I want to go to Recycling Bin and empty my Recycling Bin. All right? So that rest of that data is off the computer. Now, technically, without getting too technical, that is still, uh, there's still a latent image on your hard drive. Um, but most people aren't going to have the ability to get rid of that um, other than wiping out their entire hard drive and starting over with Windows, which is not something, a precaution that I think is necessary to take. All right. So we want to open, close that out. We want to open the Electronium offline wallet. And we're going to use Chrome. Step two, securing your wallet data. All right, so we're going to start out by securing our wallet data. What I mean by that is keeping all of the information in a centralized location within one folder, like I've started here, and then we're going to transfer that to an offline location after we've synced to the blockchain. All right, so the first thing that I want you to do is open up WordPad or any type of word editor and create you a file. I'm going to put this over here and I am going to make this a little bit smaller so it is easier for me to copy and paste. So I'm going to start out by saying public address and I'm going to copy this address just click left click from the bottom here all the way over to here the top and let go and then right click copy paste. Now we are going to remove all of the spaces in between here. As you can see they're on separate lines. We need to remove the spaces here. Very important. So I put the cursor right in front of the S in this example and press the backspace key. I'm going to do it again on the E. Backspace. Now we have all one address in one long contiguous line. That's my public address or public public wallet address. So now we need to get the rest. You mouse over here and you're gonna see rotation button. We're gonna rotate it twice. And we're going to get our private spend. And we're going to do the same thing here, guys. Copy. Paste. Now understand, I want to be very clear. Take the space out. I want to be very clear. I am not ever going to use this wallet for any transactions other than what we're doing here in the video. Reason being is I am exposing all of this information to the internet. If you copy this stuff off the screen, you could have use of this wallet. That's why I can't put any of my uh, coins or money into this wallet that we're creating. I am doing this. This is going to be a wallet that I throw away when I get done making this video. But you cannot expose or let anyone see this information. just want to be very clear. 
So private view. Same thing. Copy. Paste the entire string. All right, now we have all three addresses. Now, what I want to do with this is if you have the ability to print this out, I would recommend doing so. Here's why. If you lose the electronic information, then you have a backup in a way to recreate your wallet. Because let me be very clear, your coins are not actually held in your wallet. They are stored transactionally on the blockchain itself. So if you lose your electronic information, you can recreate your wallet with these three keys. So I would print this out if possible. Do this in a safe and secure location. I would recommend doing it at home, not in a place of work or public library or anything like that. But print this out and then keep this separate from your electronic information that we are creating, your digital information that we are creating for our thumb drive or external hard drive. And then keep this in a completely safe, locked up location, hopefully fireproof. They recommend putting it in a plastic bag just to keep stuff off of it, debris, dirt, things like that. Good recommendation. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Now I have all three of the addresses that I need, all the information off of that paper wallet that I need to progress to the next step. Now I'm going to open up my ETN wallet folder again. And I'm going to save this to that folder. Desktop, ETN, and this is going to be my keys. I would name it something. You can name it whatever you want, but I would name it something that you can remember. I'm going to do keys and password. So here's the thing. If you were putting this in a public location, I definitely wouldn't name this key file and password. But since this is going to be your information and it's going to be kept offline, uh, there's not much of a reason why you wouldn't uh, or why you would try to obscure it uh, by giving it a false name or something like that. Because anybody that understands how to work on these wallets or steal your money is going to be able to find it anyway. So just make it easier on yourself. So keys and passwords, I'm going to hit save. And now I have my file in my ETN folder. Step three, blockchain daemon sync. Step three, syncing the wallet daemon. Now, before we can do that, we obviously have to download the software for the daemon and the wallet. So what we want to do is go to github.com electronium electronium releases. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now moving forward, when you watch this video in the future, you may not see exactly what I'm seeing on my screen. This is the August 2018 point release one. As you can see, all of the other releases have been put on this page. So if you go to this page and you don't see August 2018 point release one, go ahead and download the latest release, whatever that may be and run through the process just as I am now. The process is exactly the same. Don't worry about it. All right, so Electronium Win X64 is what we're looking for. Version 2.1.1.1 zip. We're gonna go ahead and double left click that and start the download. 
It's going to take just a minute. I'll pause the video and come back after it's complete. All right, now that the download is completed, we're going to open up our downloads folder. And as you can see, Electronium Win 2.1.1.1. So we're going to double left click on that. And I'm going to click anywhere in here, like so, Electronium MD. And it's going to prompt me to extract. I need to extract all of these files into my ETN folder. So wherever that folder is, this guy right here, you're going to want to extract all of these files into that folder. So I'm going to hit select folder and then I'm going to hit extract. It's going to take just a second. As you can see, it is populating all of those files into my ETN folder. All right, there we go. So this is the folder that I want. Go ahead and close out all of this. There we go. All right, all of the files in one location. Now let's sync this node to the blockchain. So we're going to open up double left click electronium D electronium D windows may or may not throw up a warning just acknowledge it and go ahead with opening the file anyway on this version of windows it did not you should see this once it opens and again, this may be different by the time you watch this video, but the current version is August 2018, 2.1.1.1. As you can see, it's now going to start syncing to the blockchain. Synchronization started. You can see 201 out of 473,030 current blocks. So this is going to take quite a while with this particular computer to sync to the blockchain. Now, what you're going to find is that with a faster computer, faster internet connection, you may be able to sync quicker. This process will probably take anywhere from a few hours to a couple of days. So I'm going to go ahead and let this node sync to the blockchain. Now, if you come back and check it and you see that it's froze up or something's happened, all you need to do is simply close it out up here and then restart it and it should restart at the last place that it synced up to. All right, so approximately 18 hours later, we're a little over halfway done with the synchronization. Like I said, guys, this can take a long time, depending upon the computer, the hardware that you have, the internet connection speed, and how quickly you can actually talk and sync that information from the blockchain will all affect how long this is going to take. So you have to be patient. Here's a professional tip for the more advanced user. So if you were watching very closely on the bottom right section of the screen, you can see that a little over 45 minutes have elapsed since the last clip that I made where I said I was 18 hours into it and a little over halfway through. Now, as you can see, the blockchain is now synchronized. Well, I cheated and I want to show you how to cheat if you have another synchronized wallet somewhere else. I'm going to show you how to pull the blockchain, the historical blockchain data, so that you can use your new wallet quicker. All right, let me show you what I did. If you have a 
another computer that you have downloaded the daemon to before and you're setting the wallet up on a new host or a new computer you can actually pull that historical blockchain data off of the old computer and put it on the new computer and this new installation here this electronium d will reference that data on this new computer let me show you so what we want to do is go to this PC we're gonna to go to local disk whatever that may be probably C and as you can see here I don't see anything I don't see the file that I need what you have to do is go to view hidden items and you see program data popped up you see that um, it's not fully visible it's because it's a hidden file so we're gonna double left click on program data and here is the electronium wallet as you can see it's 33.3 .3 gigs it's a very large file if you have this data if you have a blockchain that's synced from another computer uh, you can actually copy this information over and put it into this directory now if you have already started your uh, daemon and started to sync uh, you're gonna need to wipe out that data first before you place this entire file structure in this location so what you would want to do is get a 64 gig or larger thumb drive or external hard drive alright so what you want to do is grab this entire file structure from the old system so if I open this up I can see all of these files here okay click down a little further this is your blockchain data this is your blockchain data okay so you can see it's a very large file all right so you gotta have a large enough thumb drive to hold it and then two it has to be a thumb drive that is NTFS formatted not FAT32. If it is FAT32, the file size will be too large, over 4 gigs, and it will not transfer on a Windows 10 installation. Not sure about Windows 7, but Windows 10 it will not transfer. Pretty sure it's the same thing on Windows 7. Now, if you have NTFS, it may still tell you that the file size is too large, but it will transfer over. All right, so what you would want to do is go out here and you would want to copy this, copy it, and then paste it into the thumb drive location. And then you would take that thumb drive and install it into this host or the host, the, the new host, and then copy to this exact location here, program data and copy the entire electronium folder into this location then when you start restart your daemon right here it will be synced as if you downloaded all of this data new to this hard drive or this host Step four, importing your wallet. All right, step number four, it's time to import and sync our local wallet to the blockchain. Let me show you how to do that. First thing we need to do is type in CMD, open up a command prompt, and I'm gonna right click this and run as administrator, left click. I'm going to bring this down here. I'm going to put this up here so we have a little more real estate. I'm actually going to make this smaller. Very important note, keep this daemon open. You can minimize it, but as long as it's running, it has to be running and synchronized anytime 
we mess with our CLI wallet, okay? Anytime that we're doing anything with our wallet, the daemon needs to be up and synchronized. Don't try to open your wallet prior to, or don't do anything at all with your wallet prior to having the Electronium D file. This one right here open and running okay this application electronium d it's important to note at this point if we have a thumb drive we can go ahead and stick our etn folder onto the thumb drive after you done, have done that make sure you delete this and then delete it from the recycling bin okay empty the recycling bin for this video I'm just going to leave it as is on the hard drive and once I get done making the video then I'm going to delete all of this information okay so at this point we want to go ahead and open up our keys and password file because we're gonna need that in just a moment all right so I'm going to minimize that. All right, so I want you to open up your location of your ETN file. For me, I've got it on the hard drive. If you've got your information on the thumb drive now, you're going to open up that location. Then I want you to right click in this address field and do copy address as text. All right, after you've done a copy address as text, we're going to minimize this. We're going to type in our command prompt cd space slash d space and then right click and press enter. All right, so what I have effectively done is change the directory that I'm pointing the computer to. So as you can see now, instead of C Windows System 32, I'm now in C Users The Farm Vega 3 Desktop ETN. All right, so now I am in the correct folder to do what I'm about to do, which is send the wallet keys and data and all that information into my ETN folder. Again, this is the same exact process if you've got this on a thumb drive or an external drive. All right, next part, very important. I'm going to put these commands in the description below for the video. So you can copy and paste, but you're going to also want to use your information. I don't know what drive you're going to be mounted to. Uh, your information is going to be mounted to or what your external drive or thumb drive is mounted to so uh, you've got to understand what I'm talking about here this information may change a little bit for your installation okay but the commands to generate the wallet info are the same so I'm going to type in electronium dash wallet dash cli dot exe space dash dash generate dash from dash keys space and then I'm gonna name my wallet you name it whatever you want I'm going to name my wallet now YouTube and I'm going to press enter I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up so you can see what it does in the background down here as we're working on this alright so enter now as you can see it just added a file Two, that's Electronium Wallet CLI. Just added that. And it's going to add more as we go along. But what it's asking for is your standard address. Your standard address is your public 
address, copy, paste, enter, secret spend. That is the private spend key. See why we had to take this down earlier? As I said, if anyone gets a hold of these three keys, they can recreate your wallet and change or send or do whatever they want uh, with your wallet data. So very important to keep these three pieces of information safe. All of your information, really. So I've copy and pasted all three of those addresses in there. Secret view is the private view. Secret spend is the private spend. Standard address was the public address. I'm going to press enter. Now, for a password, you are going to go to a, I'm not giving you any other option. This is the way I would like you to do it. I want you to go to a random password generator website. You can use any one that you want any one that you want. I prefer this LastPass site and I'm not going to make this easy. I want at least 30 characters. At least. You know what? Let's do 40 characters. All characters, upper, lowercase numbers, symbols. I'm going to hit generate. I'm going to click it a couple times and then copy password and I'm going to minimize that and directly below this very important wallet name is going to be YouTube wallet password is going to be what I just copied down so as you can see there's no way you can memorize that if you just look at it uh, really quickly it's not monkey one two three or anything very easy so you need to have a very strong password for this information. This is your money. Do yourself a favor and do the right thing when it comes to your passwords. So I'm going to right click, press enter. It's going to ask me to confirm that same password. Right click and enter. It's asking me to restore from the specific blockchain height. Default is zero. I want to restore from zero. So I'm going to press zero, enter. Now it's going to take some time. Before I get to that, I want you to see now I have a file named YouTube. I have a text document called YouTube.address, and then I have the keys file. Okay. As you can see, that is my public address G Z yeah all right so as you can see this is gonna take some time it is a lot faster than the blockchain this will probably take uh, again depending upon your CPU and hardware and everything else this will take a fraction of the time that the blockchain took to sync but remember we have to have this open Let's go ahead and save before we forget our wallet data in our text file. And I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And as you can see, we're building up quite a bit of information here uh, in our ETN directory. Again, this is going to be kept offline. I cannot stress that enough. You've got to keep this information offline once you're done syncing it. All right, when it gets done syncing, I will come back and we'll go to the next step. Step five, receiving or transferring ETN into your wallet. 
All right, so it took about an hour and 35 minutes for the CLI wallet itself to sync. A lot better than the actual daemon. So the very first command that I want to teach you now that we're finally set up, we're synced properly, is the help command. So here is a list of all the commonly used commands. Don't worry, you don't have to use every one of these, but I'm going to go through the very important ones to you later in the video. The ones that we want to concentrate on now are receiving funds into the wallet. Now, if you're sending from one wallet to another wallet, it's highly recommended that you use what is called a payment ID. Now the payment ID helps ensure that the payment goes to where you want it to. You may not get the payment in or the payment in a sufficient or an adequate amount of time if you do not use the payment ID. So in order to generate a one-time payment ID, and now understand, every time that we want to send something to this wallet, we need to generate a payment ID and give that payment ID to the individual that is sending you money from their wallet. To generate a payment ID, we simply need to type payment underscore ID. You see the ram random payment ID that was generated. What we need to do is open up another text file and I'm going to copy this payment ID. You want to select all of it and then press enter now click in the Word document field and right click and then paste. We want to take out the last character and there is our payment ID that we need to send to this wallet. So what I'm going to do is send my public wallet address which is I don't have it open so let's open up the keys and passwords and I'm going to copy and paste that and now When you send someone the information in order to pay you, you send them your wallet address and also the payment ID. Now this is very handy if you're sending uh, ETN from your, uh, let's say you have an account on KuCoin or liquid or any of the other exchanges and you're wanting to send it to your um, command line wallet or offline wallet you need to have this information okay so again very simple simply press uh, pr simply type payment ID payment underscore ID alright so I am going to go to another wallet and generate a payment of 10 ETN to come into this wallet and we'll see what it looks like. Alright guys, so as you can see I transferred 10 ETN into this wallet just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, I stepped out of my office as soon as I hit send uh, from the other wallet and it stated that it had a one uh, block backlog uh, which isn't very very long to wait at all and when I stepped out of the room I came back less than two minutes later and 
you see what I have now, which is I've received the 10 ETN, which that's pretty quick. Um, depending upon load, depending upon the amount of transactions on the blockchain, um, this could take longer. So if it takes 5, 10 minutes uh, or possibly longer, don't get scared. It's normal. Uh, when you have a low backlog, it doesn't take long at all. So as you can see, it happened pretty quickly from what I'm telling you. All right, so the next command I'm gonna show you is balance, B-A-L, B-A-L, not B-A-L colon, balance, B-A-L-A-N-C-E, balance. And it shows a balance of 10, unlocked balance of zero. Now, what this means is there has to be a sufficient amount of confirmations before it will unlock that balance in my wallet. So I need to wait a sufficient number of transactions or blocks that have passed uh, or confirmations on the blockchain for my balance to be unlocked. We'll come right back after I get an unlocked balance and continue. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button for me, and comment below. Yes, I am shamelessly plugging my own channel. Guys, I've spent about two days putting this video together, so if you appreciate that, I would really appreciate you hitting that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you're just happening by my channel, it would help me out a ton if you'd subscribe to the channel. All right, moving on. As you can see here, I now have an unlocked balance of 10 ETN in this wallet. And as you can see here, I refreshed a couple of times. All you have to do to go back through all of the commands, it's just like a Windows command prompt, okay? So all you gotta do is hit, click in the field here, and then hit the up arrow button. So up arrow, up arrow goes back to payment ID, help, so you can see it's scrolling through my commands. All right, so balance. Status shows you uh, that you're synced to the daemon and the daemon version number, okay? So that's another little tip not necessarily something that you have to look at all the time, but I like doing that just to make sure that my daemon is actually synced and I don't have an issue. Step six, sending ETN from your wallet. All right, guys, so now what I want to do is send ETN out of my wallet. I can see that I have 10 available coins to send out, okay, 10 ETN. Now there are two different ways I can do this. I'm gonna go through both with you. The first one is transfer. The second will be sweep all. You probably guessed it. Transfer is any amount under the full amount of the wallet balance. Sweep all simply means you're sweeping, cleaning all the balance out of the wallet and sending it to an address in payment ID. All right, so if we go back up here, we can actually read through what it's asking us to do. This Word document, um, I want you guys to go ahead, if you're building a wallet for the first time, I'd like you to go ahead and do as I'm doing. That way you can save this in your folder, like I've got my ETN folder here, and this could be, you could name it um, common commands or something like that and build the common commands up uh, so that you can simply copy and paste when it's time to do so. Uh, I do it, it's a lot easier than typing everything out. So just a little tip, maybe it'll help you out moving forward, okay? Save you a little bit of time. All right. So what I want to do is first type transfer and it would help if I could spell it. Okay. No editing that out. You guys get to see me making mistakes. 
So you know not everything is perfect and you're going to make mistakes too. All right, so on the transfer command, you can see here. Transfer. Transfer the priority number, the ring size, address, the amount, and payment ID. I'm going to make this a lot easier on you. You can change priority if you want to spend more on the transaction fees. You can add the ring size or the easy way to do it, unless you just need an as instant of a payment as you can get, uh, I would leave priority and ring size out and only worry about address, the amount, and the payment ID. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is type transfer as I've done and I'm going to copy and paste. Never try to type these out. I'm going to copy from my wallet that I'm wanting to send to space and then I can put let's say nine I can't do the entire balance because there is going to be some network fee associated and I don't know what that is I don't know what that is guys until uh, I actually go to send it because that can change on the fly all right so I put nine in the middle there is a space here okay there is a space in between the end of the wallet address the public wallet address that you're sending to and the amount so that's a Y space nine Then I'm gonna have another space and I'm going to copy the payment ID from this other wallet and I'm going to paste it in and I'm gonna make sure I remove that from the copy so now the way this will read and if you have a different type of document like a notepad or something like that this will look different but there's transfer space the public wallet address space the number of ETN space and then the payment ID so if I copy and paste this oh, it did not copy that's something you might run into too simply erase it and do it again copy and there you can see transfer wallet address number of coins you're wanting to send and then the payment ID and I press enter now it's going to prompt me for my wallet password so I'm going to go to my wallet password copy it enter and now it says I'm sending 9 ETN your transaction fee is 0 0.10 ETN is this okay if you press uh, any incorrect key it's gonna cancel the transaction if you press N or actually type out no it will cancel the transaction so the only thing you can do to make this progress properly is Y or type out yes altogether press enter transaction successfully submitted transaction with the I the the hash uh, you can check its status by using the show transfers command so the next thing is show underscore transfers and it shows pending out and it's 9 24 p.m. Um, looks like in uh, Electronium LTD land over here in the States it's 324 all right so I'm going to wait just a minute and when that transma transaction completes we'll be able to see it uh, you don't necessarily have to stick around to watch the transaction go through but I want to illustrate this that's why I'm gonna pause the video now and we'll come back in just a moment
a really quick note if I want to I can scroll back up I'm going to click balance had some little issues with my keyboard there I guess as you can see it relocked whatever was left in my balance because it's so low uh, it locked the entire amount again uh, more of a safety feature here don't worry it will go back to unlocked but you can see now that I sent total transaction is 9.1 ETN so the balance is now 0 0.90 ETN and again we'll have to wait for the process if we wanted to for the unlock um, unlock balance to appear as our actual balance of the wallet all right so just wait on some confirmations if you see here I've put show transfer and then show transfers obviously it liked the show transfers but did not like the show transfer but if you come up here in the command list show transfer and show transfers I don't know if it's something that was left out uh, again just a note uh, if it's you know a small little issue with the command structure um, within the wallet but I did notice that and did want to point it out don't know if you've ever seen it before it's not really a big deal it's essentially the same command just use show transfers not show transfer all right as you can see in the purple the transaction has went out so it has completed uh, as far as getting out of the wallet back to balance as you can see there's a balance of 0 0.90 locked and unlocked is zero okay don't worry it's not gonna lock your entire balance every time you do it but it's a certain portion of your balance and since I only had under one ETN in there it essentially locked my entire balance alright let's talk about commands on to the next step alright one thing that I want to do before we move on is the sweep all command so sweep underscore all and this one's a lot easier again you're essentially clearing your entire wallet to whatever address so don't make the mistake uh, or whatever address that you're sending to you're gonna sweep all of the contents of the wallet so don't make the mistake if somebody asks you for 10 ETN and you use this command if you use this command to the payment ID and the wallet address you will send the entire contents of your wallet do not do this what this is useful for is if you're transferring from one one wallet to another uh, that you own and or you're cleaning out an old wallet and you're sending to a new wallet but it, as you can see here sweep all ETN uh, the ETN address excuse me and then space and then the payment ID and I would simply hit enter it would ask me once again for my wallet password just like it did for the transfer function sweeping funds can take a few minutes or several hours to build the transactions is this okay I'm gonna say yes error no outputs found or daemon is not ready the problem is probably because uh, I do not have a let's look at our balance yep so I don't have any unlocked balance so I can't sweep what I don't have balance of 0.9 unlocked of 0, 0.00 so it won't let me obviously it's smart enough not to let me send what I don't have all right but that is the sweep underscore all command it clears out your entire wallet mastering your wallet and commonly used wallet commands again guys I would um, definitely keep those commands down as a just notes for yourself 
uh, so it makes it easier to remember after you've watched this video, you know, two months after you've watched this video. All right. And I would probably save that. I'm not going to do it just because I'm making the video, but I would save that to your folder structure and just maybe put notes or name it notes or something like that. OK. All right. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. Understand that it is still running in the background when we do all of these commands. Remember, you have to have this daemon running all the time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this over here and then I'm going to make this just a little bigger and I'm going to press enter, hold down the enter button so it clears the screen off. All right, so the first command that I want to do is password. I want to change the wallet password because you guys have seen it. And I'm issuing a little challenge. If you've actually made it over an hour into the video, there is 0.9 ETN. I don't know how much you want it. I'm going to let it stay in the wallet. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. But if you want to try to test the security of these wallets, I'm going to go ahead and change the password. You can go ahead and recreate it. Uh, and try to get that ETN out, okay? So first command, password. I'm gonna copy and paste the old password and now I can enter the new password. All right, I've copy and pasted my new password from off screen press enter it's going to ask you to confirm it enter and now I have a new password so the next time I access my wallet I will have a new password all right after we've changed our password and again you don't have to do this these are just common used commands that you can reference you can come back and watch this video and reference so that you know how to do them moving forward in the future all right so what I want to do is look at my view keys so I press view key or type in view key it's going to ask for my password. Now remember, I just changed my password, so this is going to be my new one. It's not this password that's on the screen now anymore. And it's going to give me my secret and public. As you can see, A276B, that is my private view key. It says secret here. And then my public this is for if we need to check transactions on the blockchain. What I want to do is save this information. So I'm going to put this information in my keys and password Word document. All right. Remember, if you change your password, go ahead and put the new password here. I'm not doing it on the screen in front of you guys. But I have it down on another notepad, but don't forget to save this, okay? Always save it. Better be safe. Better to be safe than sorry. All right, next one, very important. You want to save your wallet and your daemon data. So I like to do both of these commands save, and it says wallet data saved, and then save underscore BC for blockchain. So save and save BC. As you can see, one saves my wallet data and the other saves the blockchain. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and on the daemon itself, hit save. I don't want to gloss over actually starting this up for the first time because that may be confusing because we started this sync from the very beginning. It will look a little bit different when you actually open this up uh, outside of the way we did it uh, previously in the video. So when I want to close this data out to have a clean exit, a lot of people just close it out. That's not the way to do it. You want to type exit 
and you're going to type exit over here. You always exit out of the command line wallet first. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. It's not a big deal. You are going to get an error, though, if you exit out of the daemon prior to the wallet. So on the wallet, we type exit, press enter, and you can see it did close out. Uh, we are in a command line prompt, uh, a CMD, so it does look a little bit different. So after we've closed it out, press X and then exit over here on the daemon. And you see it's cleanly closing down. So when you start up this daemon, when you plug in your thumb drive or your external drive, you're going to come in here, you're going to click Electronium D. And you're going to see it's going to take just a minute to start. And again, that's okay. That's normal. It's going to take just a minute. All right. So it is initializing. And you're going to see a couple connection errors come down the screen here. That's normal for whatever reason. That seems to be a normal event. After it goes through a couple of those, then you'll see it fire off. All right. As you can see, uh, I just closed it out. So I only missed, let's see. Looks like I may have missed uh, one or two blocks, uh, and it is now resynchronized to the blockchain. Obviously, if you've had this off for any amount of time, uh, it's going to take a, a little bit longer to sync to whatever the blockchain, um, you know, whatever block the blockchain is currently at. Now, the way to open it up, the wallet, after the daemon is started, is to click Electronium Wallet CLI. Now, this is where the password file comes in. It's important. I've got my wallet name, which it is asking me for. Wallet file name. I'm going to say YouTube. If you press anything or, you know, other than or have, you know, a mistype or something like that, then you're going to have an error. If you do it correctly, you're going to see wallet and keys found because it found the YouTube information right here in the directory. And then I'm going to copy and paste my new password. I'll try it again, copy and paste. And it went through its refresh. Now you see, after so many blocks have passed, I now have an unlocked balance of 0 0.90. Okay, but I am now on the blockchain. Just wanted to show that really quick to you because it does look a little bit different uh, than how we initially did it when you go to resync this thing and refresh your wallet data every time you plug in your external drive. All right, next common used command. All right, some of these are very self-explanatory. No reason for me to go through all of them. Address, show current wallet public address. Obviously, that's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, show the blockchain height. Uh, show your balance. Those are very self-explanatory, as I showed you with balance command. Now, you can get... Um, you can donate, you can get transmission key note proof, uh, if you need to prove, um, transactions being sent, you can make an integrated address PID. Okay. This gives you your actual wallet address with your payment ID. What you see a lot of this as is stuff coming from exchanges. Uh, let's see. Password, payment ID, payments, refresh. You can rescan the blockchain. You can rescan what's been sent. Seed, 
display mnemonic seed. That's one that we do need to go over. So I'm going to do seed and I'm going to put in my password and it's going to ask me what language. I'm an English speaker so I'm going to press 1 and what I want you to do, this is very important, this is one way to recover your wallet if you lose uh, your wallet information if you have this mnemonic seed then you can recover the wallet okay as long as you got enough information to recover the wallet so let's open up our file and I am going to put seed I'm having to reach around my keyboard, around the microphone, and it's a little difficult to see. All right, then I'm going to paste my mnemonic seed. All right, and again, save that information. Guys, most of the rest of this stuff is fairly self-explanatory. Some of these features are not as useful. I'm not going to take time to go through each and every one of them. Uh, but the core ones that you need to use have all been covered in this video. All right, folks, that's it for the video. If you have any questions at all, please post them below. I want to be able to help everybody in the community. And again, I've spent a considerable amount of time making this video for the community. So the only thing that I ask is if you feel that this valuable this content was valuable to you, please like, subscribe, and share the video out. And I'll talk to you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button for me, and comment below.